We have many seen, um, many people experience a turning point in their life. Uh, the turning point led people to have different perspective toward the world and people, and also transform their life once for all. Have you ever experienced a turning point in your life? I also had a turning point in my life. I was, uh, it was my first experience meeting with God. When I was a teenager, I had a chance to attend a winter retreat. If you have a teenager child or have to work with them, you might understand their perspective uh, on the world. I mean, their own worldview. When younger teenager children are undergoing adolescence, you know, they may be sensitive to the things happening to them. Every small thing matters for them. For example, what to wear, colors of their shoes, and on and on. For me, I easily got mad and irritated by something that was nothing. There was no important thing other than me. I thought I was at the center of the world. Uh -huh. And any other people and other things were just around me by supporting me. I only cared about myself, my emotion, how people treat me, and how things going on in my life. I did not care about any other things, nor my family, not to mention my, my friends. So there was no room in my heart for others. I was the most important thing to myself. But when I joined the evening service on the second day of the retreat, all the students and teachers gathered praising God and listening to a sermon. After the preaching, we had the prayer time. The pastor asked people to repent all their sins and accept Jesus as their savior. I never thought about my sins before, and I thought I did not do anything wrong because I was the center of the world. So I just sat and pretended to pray. But a few moments later, I could feel something was happening to me. I felt like someone's warm hands embraced me. And then I heard the voice from my heart. I love you, Misa. You are my beloved daughter. I was shocked when I listened to the voice and tears were rolling down on my cheek. And that made me humbly kneel down myself before the Lord and started repent for my selfishness, arrogance, and ignorance of others. Later that night, I learned that it was the Holy Spirit. Amen. It changed my life and transformed my perspective on the world. And that experience turned out to be a turning point of my entire life. Since then, I was able to see other people around me, family and friends, in different ways. And I learned that I should not be at the center of the world, but the Lord has to be at that place. Even in my life, the Lord should be at the center of my life. And I began to learn how to live with others and to care about others. The Holy Spirit that came to my life also impacted on Jesus' disciples' life long time ago. As we read this today's scripture, when disciples gathered and prayed in one place, a strange but mysterious event was occurred. At that time, disciples were despaired and scared, not knowing what to do next after Jesus died on the cross. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, they all experienced the turning point of their life once for all. 
As all of you know, Peter, one of the best and beloved disciples, denied Jesus three times yes. and failed and misunderstood his master while he was with Jesus. Thomas could not believe Jesus' resurrection until he touched Jesus' wounds. James and John competed each other to sit next to the throne of Jesus. Other disciples were also did not understand who really Jesus was, even though they had lived with Jesus for three years and listened a lot of teachings from Jesus. Although their physical bodies were with Jesus, eating and sleeping together in some ways, their minds and hearts were not with their master. No wonder the disciples could not make true community of God, which was the vision of Jesus, although they spent three years with him. However, in today's scripture, disciples experienced the turning point of their life, which led their life to a completely different level. When they gathered together in one place, the Holy Spirit came suddenly, like a fire and wind, said the Bible. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter, who denied of Jesus and ran away from his master, boldly preached in front of 3,000 people. And all of them accepted Jesus as their Savior. Verse 14 through 36 testified, it was a great turning point for the people through Peter's transformation. Peter and other 11 disciples were not the only ones who experienced the turning point. About 120 people gathered in the upper room, and they all experienced transformation of their life as the Holy Spirit came to them. As they kept praying, they were embraced by the Holy Spirit, and they got the gift of speaking different languages. Please pay attention to the fact that this great gift enabled them to communicate with each other by listening to one another and helping them to understand each other, which did not happen before. This is a great moment that the Holy Spirit breaks down all barriers and differences among people and connects them to another to make unity before God. It was by Holy Spirit to open ears, to listen to one another, and to communicate with one another among people who were in one place but came from different places. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, they could be able to open their hearts and start to accept differences. As a result, they could be able to make the true community of God that Jesus envisioned before and the dream of all churches in this world. If you read the scripture followed by verse 21, you will find how their lives changed and transformed. They accepted others like their family members. They started to share their belongings, helped one another, and sell their own properties for others' needs. They worshiped together and lived their lives only for the Lord, not for themselves. So my question is, what does the Pentecost mean to us today? It is just an historical event that happened a long time ago? What does the Pentecost mean to you and me? How can we experience the turning point now and here? In order to answer to this question, we need to focus on Acts 2, verse 1 and 2. When the people of God gathered together in one place with the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within them. 
When we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ in this one place today, the Holy Spirit is working right here within us to make us one family and transform our lives. Although we all have different backgrounds, different cultures, different appearance, and different mother tongue, the Holy Spirit will bring us together with the great love of God they showed us on the cross. The Holy Spirit embrace all of us as one family in God. By the Holy Spirit, God works within us through this worship service. The Holy Spirit touched the wounds of people and bring healings for all, hope and courage for people who need them, and bring love to all. As disciples and many others experienced life transformation, and turning point through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that all of us who are here today will experience healing and restoration, joy, peace, and love by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to transform our life. Let us embrace one another and make a true community of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.